I have decided officially to go on a book buying ban and here's the reason why and all of the things that I'm going to be doing to implement this. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I haven't done just like a fully like discussion on a bookish topic video in a really long time and I feel passionate about this topic and I want to just kind of work through my thoughts and share thoughts with you guys in case it might help you. So a few weeks ago I made a post of a reel where I was basically saying that I was going on a book buying ban and the reason that this came about is just I've been doing a lot of work on budgeting and personal finance and just really being an adult approaching 30 just trying to hone in on the best strategy for financial freedom and just financial security for my adult life. I'm also planning a wedding and that is a large expense and I think just getting older like this is just something you have to do as an adult right and it kind of sucks but I like to plan to have a plan for success. I think existing in the bookish community, like you see everyone doing hauls, you see everyone with these gorgeous bookshelves, and I myself, I'm a part of that, right? Like I have posted hauls. I have very full bookshelves. It's very easy to get caught up in this consumerism kind of thing where you feel like you need to be buying all the books all the time. And I myself have fallen into that as well. And so this is kind of me talking to my camera, talking to you guys to, figure out a strategy to make this sustainable to my life while also still having this passion that I enjoy because I love buying books. I'm never going to not buy books. Let me just put that out there. I'm not like anti, <laughs> I don't want to say I'm not anti-consumerism. I'm, um, I'm trying to find a way to make my book buying and my book collecting sustainable for my whole life and for my budget. Honestly, when I built up this collection was when I first got a job and I had way less bills and more money than I ever had before. So I was like, let me just buy a million books because I think back and I'm like, how was I just spending all of this money? You know, like as they say lifestyle creep, like as you get older, you just have more expenses, right? Now I'm planning a wedding. That is a huge expense. So I just need to adjust. And I also now already have a big collection and my books are in their own room and I still feel like I'm running out of room. And it's this thing of like, am I going to be continuing to buy books at such a high pace that I am running out of room every single year? Books that I bought, now I need to sell. I really wanna get out of the habit of buying books only to sell them later. I really want to hone in on buying just the books that I know I'm gonna to wanna to keep in my collection forever. So I just need to rein in my personal spending habits to match my other life goals, um, but still keeping that passion of collecting and reading. I really, when I look at my bookshelves, I know I want to have a curated collection of my favorite books. Sometimes there are books that I buy and then I read and then I didn't really like them and then I don't hold on to them. So to me, it's kind of cutting that habit of buying books just to buy them because I think they're interesting but not actually knowing if I'm gonna wanna keep them. I have a whole strategy developed around that into making sure that I'm only spending my money on the books that I'm gonna wanna keep on my shelves for the rest of my life. First off, before I even get further into this video, I wanna acknowledge like the privilege that I have to have this collection and to have this life that I have that I can be planning a wedding and just be spending money on books and stuff like that. So don't think that I don't know that, but I just really wanna make this for people that are in this bookish space that are kind of like spending money and maybe are a little bit out of control with it and what to do to maintain your passion while not going overboard. And also just as a reminder for people, like, it's okay to not be participating in the consumerist culture, even though I know myself I have participated in it. So it, it's a balance, right? I have special edition fatigue. And I do want to acknowledge that on my TikTok, I, I do a bunch of like special edition reveals. I like to talk about special editions that are coming out. But most of the times when I'm making those videos, like I'm actually not purchasing those books. To me, that's a way to have content to create is by talking about how pretty these books are but it's also a way I guess for me to engage with the pretty designs without actually having to spend money on them and I like to let other people know about them but every time I'm posting about them doesn't mean I'm actually purchasing them but I do like to just keep an eye on what's coming out and talk about them so 
I'm going to be continuing to do that on my TikTok and stuff, even though I might not necessarily be spending my own personal money on those things because personally, for myself, I have special edition fatigue where I feel like having to keep up with all the special editions is just really draining and I don't want to do it anymore. I'm, I'm going to also like further pare down my special edition buying, which I'm going to talk about in my rules section. But this is a general overview of like what I am thinking going into my book buying ban and just my reasoning for why I've felt like I needed this because I took a look at my finances and it's not even just books, it's just like random things on Amazon and like just like other things that I feel like I need to start thinking critically about where I am spending my money to just set myself up for success. I have it, I have like a whole outline on my iPad that I'm reading from, otherwise I don't know what I would be saying in any order. Okay, so now going into this, these are my own rules for my book buying ban. And the first rule is, even though I'm calling it a book buying ban, it is actually not 100% a book buying ban because this is a sustainable lifestyle change for me. And I've been trying to do similar things in the past, but I think like I really need to like set rules with myself or I'm going to break them. However, that being said, I know if I say I 100% am buying no books from now until whenever, I'm never going to stick to it. I'm just going to break it and then I'm going to be like, fuck it, and then just buy all the books that I want. So I need to set sustainable ways for me to continue to collect, but not to strain my budget. Okay, so first rule, special editions and things that you can only buy at a certain time because there's some sort of sale or something like that. So my rule with special editions has been for a while now is that I have been really not buying anything from boxes like Fairy Loot, Owl Crate, Illumin Crate, I have none of those subscriptions and I have really not been buying any of their special editions because there are so, so many that they keep coming out with. And even though I enjoy sharing them and talking about them with other people, I don't enjoy spending all my money on those. And it becomes really hard because then you need a subscription in order to have access and in order to get the early sales and then that's like already money that you're investing in it and then there's just more and more and it just is a never-ending cycle so i have told myself i'm like if there is something that i think is the best ever special edition for one of my all-time favorite books and it has this like beautiful design then yes i will purchase but once i stop buying them i've like really there's been none that i've been like i am absolutely spending my money on this and there are some that i bought and then sold because i'm like i actually don't feel like I want to hold on to it and especially it's like the resale market I've talked a lot about this but the resale market is terrible it's terrible people will flip books so they'll get them buy them let's say they buy it for a hundred dollars they'll go and sell it for four hundred dollars like I cannot justify spending that much money on a special edition it's just not worth it to me but when you get in the collecting game and then you feel like you have to have these certain things it's just a deadly cycle because then you're going to keep spending more and more money and these people know that there like is market scarcity and they're capitalizing on it by buying up all of the stock and then flipping it and then that's why you have these ridiculous resale prices it's just not it's just like its own little micro market and it's not sustainable and that's why i've kind of been like i'm not participating in this at all i either get it from the source for the price or i don't get it at all and a few years ago i came out with a rare book buying guide and i feel like because the special edition market has changed so much, most of that is not even applicable because you can't, you cannot find these rare books for like actual prices. And there are some, a few like out of print books and stuff like that that I've been able, that were from a retailer or a publisher that I've been able to hunt down like back then that I don't think I would have a prayer of getting for like under $500 now. Like when I first started getting more into collecting, The Strange the Dreamer, which is one of my favorite books, um, I got the blue sprayed edges and this was actually a $30 former library book and it did take me a while to hunt this down at a reasonable price. I genuinely don't think I could ever find this for this price ever because now it's been even more years, right? But like the resale market is just crazy. So to me, I just don't find it worth it to to invest in it in the first place. The last time I think I bought a special edition from a box was this From Blood and Ash set from 
the bookish box and from blood and ash it's one of my favorite series and it got a bunch of special editions at once probably because the licensing rights were given out at once for boxes to do it and i was like i cannot get all of these special editions i chose one and i chose this one because i really really love mono lime art that did the art on this and that was basically <laughs> the last time that i was like getting a set from a retailer and having to go back and get the subsequent books in the series in the sale from bookish box and knowing that like i might miss the next book and then have an incomplete set is also really stressful and i don't like dealing with that so in my own personal rules if there is a special edition that i feel like i absolutely have to have yes i can invest in it but i really really need to think through it and since i've stopped there has been and especially since this from blood and ash set which is probably right around the time when i stopped buying special editions about like two years ago when it came out like since then like there really hasn't been anything that i feel the need to spend all this money on and the special edition boxes themselves in general are getting more and more expensive so it's like the baseline cost of them is going up as well there was a box the Illuma Creep box, I think, was doing a set for Fury Born, and I was going to purchase those because Fury Born is one of my literal all time favorite series, and the set was gorgeous. And then I think they had to redesign it because of some trouble with AI art that was unknowingly on there. Um, we have a whole other discussion for a whole other day. But, anyways, that is probably the next set that I will invest in, but that puts me at two sets from boxes in like two years so I feel pretty good on that front. There are some things like page overlays or like dust jackets that I also like to to buy and those are less expensive but I really really just need to think to myself is this a book I've actually read? Is it a book that I actually love and like do I feel like it's worth spending the money? So I really need to think that through. So if there is something that I have deemed worth my time and money to buy and invest in, then yes, I can spend the money on that. But it really has to be a thought through process. Now, the next thing is, that was special editions from boxes, right? Now these are special editions from retailers, so things like Barnes & Noble exclusives, Waterstones exclusives, etc, etc. Because they are so popular, books are now getting more and more exclusive editions. And because they're retailer editions, I've just felt like spending my money on it willy-nilly. And... <laughs> I feel like it's almost like I looked at like all the books I bought on Barnes & Noble this year and I'm like some of them I'm like I don't know if I actually needed the Barnes & Noble exclusive and the regular ex one at the same time. Like I just don't know if I like the book that much or if the special edition had that much extra that it was worth it to either buy both or buy the Barnes & Noble one when I didn't even read the book. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more leeway with that. If it is a series that I've already been collecting and I already love, say the Barnes & Noble exclusives of the Belladonna series or some other other books and authors that I know that I absolutely love. Okay, yes, I can pre-order that and I'll be going into a rule later that I can kind of balance my book spending over time. So that is one of the rules. Like I have to look at what I'm actually pre-ordering and ask myself, is this an author that you have read from before and enjoyed? Is this a series that you enjoy? Is this something that you feel that you truly need the special edition to collect? And if the answer is yes, then okay, so be it. But there are, uh, going through my Barnes & Noble's pre-orders that I had, I took a lot out of my cart. I took a lot out of my cart. Um, and sometimes the special editions like don't actually have enough changes that I feel like maybe I'm just buying it just to buy it. So I'll show you two examples. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of Fall of Ruin and Wrath by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I love Jennifer L. Armentrout, but I liked the blue color more for the first book. And there's nothing super special about this book besides the color that's different that I'm like, mm, I don't necessarily know why I spent my money on this just besides the fact to say that I have when I probably would have been fine with the book in the original color and just having one copy. So I honestly, I might sell this. Another strategy where this is the Hurricanes Wars by Thea Guanzan that just came out, you know, bought before I created my rules, but I am gonna try and read it soon. And there's nothing too different about the Mars and Noble exclusive, except it has this like cool map and papers and maybe like a bonus, there's like a bonus essay or something in the back. So if I put this on my shelf, you won't really know the difference between the Barnes & Noble and the regular from the appearance. 
So I'm like, okay, well then I just bought the Barnes & Noble and then I don't need a copy of a regular one. So kind of thinking through the situations that way where, okay, I'm just going to buy this one and then I'm not going to buy the other one. Is Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. This is a book. I have a reading vlog for it out if you want to watch it. Um, this is one of my all-time favorite series, one of my all-time favorite authors, and I knew I was going to want to read and annotate it. And I know, and I actually love this Barnes & Noble colorway, but I knew I wasn't going to want to annotate in this special edition book because I do feel that this is a collector's item that I'm not going to want to write in. And so I bought both, and I've been collecting both of the covers for her series for a while. So this is a book that I feel is worth the investment. Okay, so to that point, I just really want to figure out personally which special editions are worth purchasing and investing in. With that being said, I did look at the things that I had pre-ordered on Mars & Noble and I canceled a bunch. I'm like, I actually am not super invested in this series where I feel like I need to buy this. Or I kept some, like Wisteria by Adeline Grace. I love that series, it's one of my favorites and I really enjoy the different colorways on the two editions and I want to keep collecting it. So there's a balance, right? There's a balance. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to tell you my rule at the end that's going to tie this all together for, okay, well then if you have these things that you say that you can buy, then how do you know you're not just going to spend all your money by telling yourself it's okay within your rules? So there is a way to kind of pare that down. So with that being said, the special editions are getting more and more popular. They're a device that a lot of people are using to drum up hype for books. So then as a buyer that's trying to be conscientious of these things and existing in this market while also trying to save money but still be collecting, it's tough. So if for example, Red Tower had the huge hit with Fourth Wing and they have the dragon stenciled edges and people went crazy for them. So now all of the books that they are releasing have beautiful stenciled edges and I had them all pre-ordered. I don't think I read the summary for all of them and the way that life goes theoretically they're not gonna all blow up the same as fourth wing if they do red tower is gonna have a great fiscal year but i, I was pre-ordering them just because they had a pretty stenciled edge and if i were to continue doing that and more and more publishers do that i'm just gonna be pre-ordering books that i don't care about just because the publisher decided to do something fancy with it like i have to draw the line if i read the book and i really like it Maybe I could find out, like, maybe I can get an advanced copy through NetGalley. Maybe I read the audiobook and try and scoop it up before it's gone. Maybe if it's not that popular, I can even get it secondhand without paying an arm and a leg. Things like Pango Books are really great for finding used books. If it doesn't blow up like Fourth Wing, like, you probably can get a secondhand copy after it goes out of print. But if I read it through some other means, pretty soon after release, I probably could still get the Sprite Edge, depending on how big their first print run is or maybe I end up just not caring about that book and then I don't care that I don't have this right edge you know what I mean but on the other hand we have Trisha Levenseller who is coming out with a companion novel to The Shadows Between Us Shadows Between Us one of my all-time favorite books Trisha Levenseller is one of my all-time favorite authors yes I pre-ordered those because I know that she's a favorite and I know that I'm going to treasure those in my collection versus books that I don't know anything about and I was just blindly pre-ordering because they had stenciled edges like I just need to cut myself off. So again, it's balancing and it's choosing which are actually worth it to me and trying to just take off those like blind purchasing just because it has something pretty about it. Like instinct that the marketing people in the book industry are trying to get you to develop. Because then it's like, then if everything has a stenciled edge or a whatever, then it also becomes less special in my eyes because everything is doing it. So then it's like, then they're going to keep coming up with more and more things to get you to keep buying these pretty books. And at the end of the day, like, you need to care about the story inside of the book, not just the cover. As I say, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> Another thing that I want to keep in mind is there are some books that I pre-order, but I don't know if I, like, I don't buy them. I don't read them right after I get them. And with a lot of them, they will be around for purchasing later. Like, I, just because I'm interested in a title, it doesn't mean that I need to pre-order it. Yes, that helps the author, but unfortunately, I also have to help myself with my own budget. And sometimes I do get drawn in by the pre-order goodies, but it has to be a balance, right? I can purchase that book later. I don't need to pre-order it if I don't think I'm going to get to it the second 
that it arrives at my door. I do have some pre-orders that I kept for next year for my most highly anticipated books where I know the second they drop on my doorstep I'm cracking open that book and reading it. If I'm not doing that I cancel the pre-order. There are some backlist titles that I really want to read and I but I'm like I'm not gonna buy that right now because I'm not gonna read it at this very second because another thing that I really want to try and avoid is having all these physical books accumulate, I buy it, I get the serotonin hit from buying it, and then I let it sit on my shelf. I want to be like I was before I started collecting books, where I bought a book and then I read it. And I think it's really easy to not do that when you're constantly pre-ordering, constantly buying, blah blah blah. So I have a list of books that I want to buy, my bookish wish list. I'm actually going to do a video, I think soonish on what those bookish wishlist books are that I want to buy, but I am not letting myself purchase them until I am going to read them. So I kind of like by rewarding myself with the purchase of the book, when I actually read it, then I will get in the better habit of actually reading books the second that I buy them and not just buying them to own them. And at the same time, I also want to read through my physical own TBR. One of the things that I am doing to help myself with that is literally writing down a list of all the books that I own that I haven't read. I have it in my bullet journal um, and that that's a good resource. Something that some people do is they're like if I read five books that I own then I can buy one new book. I'm not doing that rule for myself. I think it's a good rule. I just want to try my other rules first before that but I think that could be something that could help one of you watching. So in that vein, if I'm buying a physical book I need to read it within like a month of purchase and that is like a hard rule that I'm setting for myself. I am not going to buy a book, I'm not going to pre-order a book if I'm not going to read it immediately because then it's going to sit on my shelf gathering dust for what reason. I could have waited until I had more money to buy it. I could have waited until I had more money to buy it. I could have waited until I was actually going to read it to buy it. Instead I spent the money and now it's gathering dust. And that is a hard truth for someone that is a book collector. I can wait to add those to my collection for when I will actually read them. Which is, it's a hard adjustment after just buying books willy nilly for years. However, I know I, I'm reading over 100 books a year at this point. I do not have the funds to physically buy every book that I read. Also, not every book that I read is a book that I want to keep. Sometimes you want to read a book just to read it, but you don't actually like feel attached enough to want it in your collection. To help me with this book buying ban, I'm trying to also really focus on utilizing the other resources that are available to me. I have a library card. I have a library down the street from me that I can go in and get physical books from if I want to read it physically. I can get ebooks from Libby. I can get audiobooks from Libby. I can get audiobooks from Scribd if I wanted to start up my subscription again. But honestly, my library selection is good enough that I don't even use Scribd anymore. I have Kindle Unlimited. There's a lot on there. I have a NetGalley account where I can request arcs of like popular books that are coming out and I have so many books that have already come out that I have arcs for that I never read. My NetGalley ratio is bad and I need to improve that because I know <laughs> I get trigger happy and I request more than I can read. So that's something I'm also trying to work on. I have honestly some physical books some ARC copies of books that I got like at conventions and stuff like that so it wasn't specifically given to me for the purpose of reviewing but now those books have been out and it's like well why am I going to buy the physical book if I have the ARC that I can read that's like similar to the finished book so it's just things like that. There are also some books that I've like read on audio and stuff that I loved that I want to purchase and I'm waiting until I have more money to actually purchase it because it will be there for the day when I have more money to buy it. I just really really want to curate the selection on my shelves and get rid of me unhauling books. I want to only be the flow of books that come into this room and then to never leave. I want to only be buying the books that I know have an emotional effect on me, that I know that I love, that I'm going to keep. Because if I'm going to unhaul it later then that's money lost. Even if I sell it on Pango I'm selling it at a loss. Like that is just money that you spent that is now gone. And I want to avoid that because I just feel like yeah sometimes I need to unhaul books because I've just gotten this big collection of books that I like I'm not interested in anymore and like that to me is really hard because yeah it is money that you wasted. That's a hard truth. It's money that you wasted because now you're just donating it, throwing it out. It's not in your collection anymore. You spent money on it and you're not even going to keep it. Brief overview of the rule so far. 
I really need to think about the special editions that I'm going to buy and I'm really really going to limit myself on those editions that I am purchasing. If I do pre-order a book or buy a book, I need to read it within a month of purchasing it. Otherwise, why did I spend the money on it in that moment to let it gather dust on my shelf when I could buy it later? I really need to ask myself every time I spend money on a book, is this something that I'm going to want in my curated favorite book collection for the rest of my life? I need to start utilizing other resources even more such as NetGalley, Kindle Unlimited, and my library. And then within the framework of all of those, the thing that I think is going to help me the most is if I am buying a book, I can only buy one book per pay period or if it's a set, one set per pay period. But I really don't want to be having months where I'm just buying all of these books. So if I have like a pre-order coming in on a specific day, then I cannot buy any other books. I would prefer to have zero books. But if there's something that surpasses my rules that I put here, one per pay period. So then that way I'm not going to Barnes and Noble and buying five books and spending like $80. I go there, I spend maybe $20, $30. One book per pay period. So it's, it's a book buying ban, but it's also a sustainable book buying lifestyle change because I don't want to be wasting money on a hobby and then not keeping that book in my collection. It's just kind of a waste to be. And through unhauling a lot of books in the past two years, I realized that maybe I went overboard at certain points of buying books. And sometimes there's just special editions that you don't need, that you don't need. And it's the hard truth. So anyways, that is really all that I had to talk through today. I think it was actually really helpful for myself in establishing these rules to just have this discussion. I would honestly really love to hear from you guys in the comments, like what you think. I know that maybe this isn't the most popular type of video on booktube because it's a typical like very consumerist environment and I'm not demonizing buying books like at all like you guys know I love to buy books it's one of my main hobbies in life it's just really trying to think critically about where I am spending my money because I am getting older <laughs> and I the financial freedom financial security is very important to me so there there was a lot I feel like maybe I rambled a little bit in certain points but I do I did enjoy talking through this so I don't know I just really would love to hear from you guys in the comments what you think any tips or tricks maybe you hated this uh, maybe don't leave a comment but um I don't know I like to post these discussion videos to start a discussion so I would really really appreciate uh, your thoughts and opinions so that is all for today and have some fun read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one Bye.